Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, it's the 21st of April 2017. Hope you had a good week of trading. Uh, the markets overall were pretty much higher. Uh, the biotechs, you can see, lost some ground and uh, oil got hit pretty hard actually, as did the dollar. So let's take a look at the charts and uh, make some sense of this action. The S&P 500 continues to hold above that uh, year-to-date volume weighted average price. That's uh, from this level and it, you can see it's hit a couple times. Uh, this year at, uh, you know, about a month ago and then again uh, last Friday. So we continue to hold above that. To me, it's more important than the 50-day moving average. We did close below the 50-day moving average, uh, and now that's about uh, six days in a row that it's done so. But I don't view it as a negative uh, unless that 50-day moving average is flat to declining. So we're still, you know, overall in a primary uptrend, but if we lose ground in this general area, I think that it's likely to come down towards the volume weighted average price uh, from the election. And uh, right now we're just uh, kind of in consolidation mode in the uh, S&P 500 as we continue to see these lower highs. Uh, and then when we switch down to a shorter term time frame, such as a 65 minute chart, uh, we can see in here that, uh, you know, we've kind of got a choppy mess in here. I've been talking about the uh, 236.50 as an important level. And I still think that that's probably going to be the key for next week, that if we can kind of get back up above that level and then maybe hold there, uh, then it, it puts us in a much better chance for continued upside if we do something uh, such as this. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, danger, of course, would be uh, if we break back down below this uh, five-day moving average and uh, that five-day moving average begins to decline. But it's good to see that the five-day moving average did hold uh, on this pullback here today, even though we lost some ground. I view that as constructive because we have this, uh, what was a lower high, then we had this high, uh, a higher high, and then we have this higher low, and now this is a new higher low uh, preceded by the higher high. So on the intermediate term, it's uh, turning, you know, neutral to positive, longer term, more new, you know, daily time frame here, more neutral, longer term, of course, still in a major uptrend. Know what your personal time frame is and uh, choose your risk points. We've got, uh, you know, earnings have been coming out. So far, I'm told that uh, about three quarters of the S&P 500 components that have reported are coming out ahead of expectations. So that's good. But, you know, be aware that uh, it's it's always uh, company dependent. You can have a company like Goldman Sachs uh, get smashed on earnings like IBM did. But then there's a lot of companies that are also doing well. So know you know, that basically uh, news and surprises tend to follow the direction of the trend. To me, that means the direction of the 50-day moving average. Um, let's look at the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ did make a new all-time closing high this week uh, on Thursday. And, uh, you know, after touching upon that rising 50-day moving average, you can see how far above the year-to-date volume weighted average price is uh, that is above the volume weighted average price compared to the S&P 500, which has been, uh, as as we've noted, just kind of uh, finding uh, you know finding buyers there and acting as an important near-term level of support. So the Nasdaq uh, is in much better shape uh, overall. Uh, it got beyond this little area that uh, I was looking at as potential resistance. That if we were to get through there, we would want to see it hold. And I think for next week, uh, you know, I ideally we can hold above this rising. Five Day moving average and hold above that 132 level. Uh, I would say it would become more dangerous if it was to probably break below uh, Wednesday's low. But for now, you continue to give the benefit of that, uh, the doubt to the buyers uh, because we're in a primary uptrend. Looking now at the Russell 2000, this is the market that's been just in this sideways consolidation uh, all of this year and into uh, you know early uh, December of last year as well. So the key there, I think, continues to be this year-to-date volume weight, or I'm sorry, the volume weighted average price, not year-to-date, but from the election. You can see that that has that's that purple line that's been holding uh, and finding buyers in that general area. We've only closed below it once. Right now, on an intraday time frame, such as a 195 or uh, 65 minute chart here, you can see that you know we've got this band of resistance uh, with this with these trend these trend lines that I've kind of drawn in. It's a downward sloping 
band of resistance in here. We did make a little bit of uh, progress in that uh, we've, you know, we've got uh, these higher lows above a rising 10 and 20 day moving average. But again, you know, you can't read too much into it. It's positive that we closed above the 50 day moving average, but this isn't the first time that, uh, you know, we've bounced above the 50 day moving average, um, you know, after, after the, while in this range. And you can see that we're still trapped below that trend line. So really, I mean, it's just more neutral action in here, um, but the range is tightening a little bit. Next week, if we see a pullback, ideally, we'd like to see it hold near about this 135.75 to 136 level, and then maybe it could rebuild some energy and, and, and head back up towards the top end of that range. But for now, overall, it's really just kind of range bound and difficult to make any uh, real directional bets on it. So I'm telling uh, my subscribers at Alpha Trends, we're basically and avoid in there. The semiconductors last week came down to that year-to-date volume weighted average price, uh, and uh, we did see that uh, buyers uh, stepped in. Uh, and you know, a lot of people again were focused on the 50-day moving average, and it, it was instead the year-to-date volume weighted average price that touched almost to the penny in there before we saw this uh, bounce back this week. Now, looking to a shorter-term time frame, look at a 30-minute time frame in here. Uh, this is what what I've been you know thinking was a potential level of uh, resistance on this bounce and we're getting into that area so I think it's time to just let this settle down a little bit the semiconductors have had a massive run over the last year and a half and uh, now it's time for uh, perhaps a little settling down in here we are still above the rising 10 20 30 40 week moving average so it's difficult to be bearish uh, while we're in that situation, and all of those moving averages are still rising. The biotechs, uh, this group, is continuing to find buyers, right now at least, at the year-to-date volume weighted average price. That's a purple line. You can see we keep coming down with more frequency and testing that, and we're unable to get back above this little band of resistance near 292. I think that uh, you know, the more times any type of support is tested, the more likely it is to fail. So I wouldn't be surprised to see these biotechs break down. And if they were to do so, uh, a logical place might be for them to come down and test the volume weighted average price from uh, that November low uh, down near 282. So realistically, it just doesn't look like there's anything uh, worth doing in these biotechs right now. If we take a look at a 65-minute uh, chart, we're still clearly showing uh, these lower highs and pressure coming down on this market. So I think that uh, 292 is going to be the key. We wouldn't want to buy it if it goes straight up through that level. Instead, we'd like to see, you know, if it goes straight up through that level, then pull back and then buy strength perhaps over here. Or an alternative scenario in which you want to anticipate if you're looking to get bullish uh, set, uh, biotechs is maybe they run up like this, fall short of that level, come back down, make a higher low, and then as these 5 and 10 day moving averages start to flatten out and head higher, then you would want to buy a breakout with a stop underneath what would be here, the most recent relevant higher low. But for now, I just don't see any advantage to being involved in these biotech stocks. Uh, bonds did follow through a little bit to the upside here this week, and you know I'm still uh, thinking that it's likely uh, that uh, we will come back into the range, given that we have a declining 30 and 40 week moving average. So uh, they, you know, but you can't deny that uh, the trend has been higher here the last several weeks, that uh, we've had a, a nice consolidation, uh, which led to a resumption of the upside. Now, uh, next week in the bonds, maybe dropping back below 123 would be, make it more difficult for these, but uh, you know, just know your time frame, know your stops. We had some, uh, you know, really good trades. We're still long some MLCO in uh, uh, Alpha Trends. They, you know, we were involved from uh, over here. Uh, we're involved in New Skin, which we purchased at this point. Uh, we're involved in Hawk, which we bought right here. Uh, Meat is one that we're going to be looking at next week. This stock uh, on the uh, weekly time frame, you can see it's got a good uh, uh, short position in there. And this prior bigger uh, band of resistance on the uh, weekly time frame has held as support. All those moving averages are heading higher. The stock recently, uh, the company uh, did a secondary offering, which they priced at $5 a share. It's absorbed that. Now it's above all the volume weighted average prices from, you know, from this peak and from, uh, you know, the low of that pullback. So I think next week, this is one you certainly want to watch if you want to know how we trade it.
sign up for Alpha Trends and, and find out how uh, we're short uh, this uh, ARRS and, and still have a, a portion of that open uh, with a stop up at 25.65 after covering some today at 25.35. We're also going to keep a close eye on BLDR. Builder is right up against this recent little resistance. That's something we're looking at. We're involved in, in some SUM here. And uh, GPRE is one that looks like a potential short sale candidate. We'll be looking for an opportunity in there. And of course, you know, cutting cutting risks, uh, you know, as, as the stocks tell us to. We got stopped out of uh, Shake Shack this week uh, on the short side. We had shorted it uh, over in here as it was breaking down. And we covered right here before that big rally. We also got involved in Baidu. That was a loser as well. Uh, Baidu, we, we shorted over here and we covered on this day right here for a small loss and avoided that big move. But we also had beautiful shorts in AMBA. AMBA, we got short over here, covered the last bit under this level. And then Tempur-Pedic, we uh, had shorted that one uh, as it was breaking down over in this area, covered the last bit on this day, and you know avoided giving back all of our gains. So it's there's, there's still a lot of opportunity on both sides of the market. Short side is still more difficult because we're in an overall bull market. But uh, if, if you have a plan and you manage risk, there's still great opportunities out there. Hope you had a good week, and uh, I'll text you, talk to you again next week. Thank you.